Hello and welcome to Ask the Crown. I'm Stephanie McGrain and tonight I am joined by the very beautiful and talented Miss America 2011, Teresa Scanlon. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. Well now, congratulations to you on capturing the Miss America title. Thank you. And I, I understand that you were the youngest Miss America crowned since 1937. Welcome to the secret to your success. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So tell us, what was the secret to your success to being crowned Miss America. You were the youngest Miss America since 1937. What was the secret to your success? <laughs> well, I think a lot of people try to find maybe some kind of magic something that you can just do to make sure that you win any competition that you compete in. Um, and I can certainly say I didn't win every pageant that I did compete in. So it's certainly not anything like that. I really do believe um, that for every competition, no matter what, um, God's will will be done in the end. And so whoever is meant to be, it will happen. Um, and it's simply that for that particular competition, which happened to be Miss America, his, his plan for that part of my life was that I would take that title and it would change the rest of my life, um, while it was different for every other contestant. Um, also, I, I really do think, that obviously, the judges are different in every single pageant, in every single competition. And so I think it really does depend entirely on the connection that you have with the judges. Um, if it was another group of seven different people, who knows what the outcome might have been. And uh, for one reason or another, or another, despite many of the judges being very different than myself, being completely on the opposite end of the spectrum, whether it be religiously, politically, etc., um, for one reason or another, we were able to connect on that. And um, they felt that they really liked me, that they were willing to give me this responsibility. And that could have been very, by a very small margin, not unanimous at all. But uh, nonetheless, you know, one vote can push it over and the rest of your life is it changes. You know? So I think oftentimes contestants need to focus more on being able to relate to any kind of person rather than necessarily what can I do about myself to make them like me. It's rather about connecting with that individual. Well, is there any sort of secret or any sort of advice you can give to people going into pageant interviews? Something that they can do to maybe make the judges connect with them more? Or do you think it's just something that happens with the mix of people and um, there's no real way to plan for that? Um, I would say it's both, actually, because <laughs> there's, there's definitely an element that you can't control and that you can't plan for because some people just right away when you see someone first impression, maybe you, they just rub you the wrong way and you absolutely can't stand them and <laughs> you don't know why, you know, so that's something you can't control. But on the other side, I think oftentimes what we do as contestants, and this is a mistake, is we focus all on ourselves. And all we say is we walk in there thinking, I want to make them like me and tell them how great I am. So we basically walk into an interview and go, I'm wonderful, I'm fabulous, this is why you should choose me. And that is all <laughs> wrong because judges can be really turned off by that. And they may, you know, they may think it's cute or something like that, but for the most part, they need to understand that you care. And there is that saying, of course, that people don't don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and so it's it's kind of like that where I would focus more on connecting with those individuals and making sure that the answers that you give for example are taking into consideration trying to help them understand trying to communicate effectively so for example with myself knowing that these judges were all somewhat very different than myself I made sure with answers to simply try to communicate a little bit more, explain a little bit more, uh, substantiate my positions so that they could understand where I was coming from. Where maybe in a different audience, now when I do speaking engagements to a particular audience, the way that I speak may be just a little bit different because you're taking your audience into consideration, which is very important. I love that. And, and obviously you connected with the judges that night during that competition, the entire competition, and everything worked out in your favor. And so tell us, how were you feeling as they began calling off the runners up during the competition? What was going through your mind? Oh goodness. Well, I think that goes back to the very beginning of the competition because 
I came there as the youngest contestant, obviously, thinking that I had no chance whatsoever to win um, because a 17-year-old had not won since 1937 and because Nebraska had never, ever won Miss America in 90 years. Um, I basically said there's no chance, so my goal is simply to do my best and to try to set a record for Nebraska, right? So um, all through the preliminary competitions, I was thinking I just need to make Nebraska proud, make my you know directors, my family, friends proud and we so sure did that. <laughs> <laughs> well the, the preliminary night I won the talent award and Nebraska had never won a prelim talent award so I thought okay I've I've set a record I'm good I'm ready to go so I was done at that point basically so then Saturday was all kind of icing on the cake where when the runners up were being called I was just amazed that I got that far I was going I can't believe this is the top five it's one of us all of this you know um, so I thought I was gonna be fourth runner-up so I went out there and I was like so excited I was like, I'm going to be fourth runner up. Yes, everyone's going to be so happy. And then fourth runner up was called. And I went, I'm going to be third runner up. Yes, I'm so excited. This is going to be amazing. And here I am just imagining in my head the homecoming that I would have going back to Nebraska because we've never had anyone in the top five before. And, and that went all the way through. And so I'm holding my first runners up and runner up's hands. And, and as I was really just thinking that, you know, I cannot believe I'm first runner up to Miss America and everyone is going to be so excited. And I showed everyone and all this. And I just thought there was no way that the judges would would give a 17 year old the responsibility of Miss America. Um, so I figured that they, they obviously I was going, oh, they, they liked me, they were impressed by me, that's awesome. So they wanted to give me the honor of first runner up, but there's no way they're going to let me go all the way. <laughs> and so I was kind of, I guess, resigned to that at that point. And when they called my name, I just didn't even know what to think um, because it was so unexpected and I had no idea um, what was going on. And I don't think it even sunk in, sunk in for like, two weeks, probably more actually, even to this day, I think sometimes I, I go back and go, wait a minute, did that really happen? Did that really happen? Was they crowned Miss America? <laughs> <laughs> well, now what did you do to prepare for Miss America? And how long in advance did you start preparing for the competition? Oh goodness, um, I really do kind of say that that was my entire life <laughs> and not in the sense that I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be Miss America when I grow up. I need to do all of these different things. But it was rather in the sense that I was never interested in ever competing in a pageant. And then in high school, I started to realize as I was competing that this was an area in which all of the different things that I was involved in before kind of came together. Um, I was always kind of diverse and liked variety and had lots of different interests. And so it wasn't... Um, you know, that I was really, really good at piano or really, really good at this or really, really good at a sport. It was just kind of, I liked everything. I liked to try everything. I was okay at some things. And that never really benefited me or I never got rewarded for that because it's just kind of being average. But then what happened with pageant competitions is you got rewarded for being involved in your community, for good academics. They, you know, they recognize these accomplishments and they recognize it as being well-rounded, as being a woman of diversity and, and loving, you know, all sorts of different things and being unique and different. And so all of a sudden, this was a place that I realized, you know, I think everything I've been doing my entire life has been preparing me for this moment. And I think that's why at 17 years old, I was roughly ready for this kind of title because my entire life in, in various ways had been preparing me. Absolutely, yes, it, it, and being Miss America, you know, you, you have to be the total package and you have to be well-rounded. You need to be intelligent, you have to be a good speaker, you have to be beautiful, and so, you know, definitely being well-rounded in your life, you know, played a, a huge part, I believe, in you capturing the title of Miss America. Right, right. You have to have something to share because if, if you if you aren't an interesting person and you stand up there and say, well, I'm just your average girl and there's nothing interesting about me, that's not really going to go too far. <laughs> so, I don't think it will. <laughs> so, so being able to have something that you want to share with other people that you're excited about, passionate about, I mean, it always will make a difference. So what was your year like being Miss America? Tell us about some of your highlights. Oh goodness, now that's really hard because it's it's basically like 
the world's largest internship, and it's an entire year. Uh, but twelve months in twelve months, you basically pack in enough experiences to that most people get in about 35, 40 years. You know, so I, I believe that. It, it I believe really that. Was. Um, we traveled about two hundred thousand miles. I believe I hit wow. thirty six states and five countries. Um, you're on a plane about every other day. Um, so the the morning after you win Miss America, you fly straight to New York City. That whole week is all the national media that first week. Um, and from there, you hit the ground running. I was home one week for Easter and two weeks for Christmas. But other than that, you're on the road 24-7. Um, so your family and friends don't come with you. A lot of people think that. Um, it is a job, and it's a very full-time job. There were a lot of you know 16-hour days where you're in heels walking for 16 hours. <laughs> and so it's um I mean it, it can be hard work too. I think the longest autograph session I did was six hours. Um, so it's it, wow, it can, that's a yeah. lot that'll wear you out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think it's something people don't realize. They think, um, and I think many people think this about just kind of celebrities in general, is that everything's easy breezy, wonderful. But really, it, you have to be passionate about it, and that's why you have to be passionate about what you do, because otherwise you'll never last a year. <laughs> and so um, it is it is crazy, but it is an opportunity to be able to reach so many people. I mean, here I was from a town of 8,000 people in Nebraska, and 17 years old, just graduated high school, and yet was able to all of a sudden reach huge audiences. I think the largest group I spoke to was about 20,000 people. Um, you know, then obviously TV reaches an even broader audience, but that's just a live event with that many people, and that kind of feeling is incredible. Um, one of the, I guess, maybe highlights just as far as a kind of I just did that moment goes is I, I was able to speak at the American Legion National Convention in Minneapolis directly before President Obama. And so I was wow. one of the speakers on stage right before him. I was his opening act, I guess. <laughs> and, and, and you know, then he came and made met everyone on stage afterwards. And that was one of those things that I thought, um, you know, I may have imagined myself maybe 20, 30, 40 years down the road, hopefully doing something like that, but never in a million years would I have thought that possible. Well, now I know that you were interested in possibly going into politics, so I bet that was very exciting, yes. meeting the president, but is that something that you still aspire to do? Yes, absolutely. Right now, currently, I'm going to school at Patrick Henry College for my undergrad in government. Um, I would like to follow that with uh, law school. Hopefully at Harvard, that's always been my dream, um, but law school would be fantastic and then move back to Nebraska and go into politics there. I would love to represent the state of Nebraska on the state, federal level. Um, that's I think become even more of a passion of mine through this experience, being Miss Nebraska, being able to represent my state. I've realized how important that is to me to be able to go home and, and work for the people of my hometown and my home state. That sounds wonderful. And how do you feel about the Miss America pageant moving back to Atlantic City? I am so, so excited for it. Now I'm just jealous that wasn't my year. But, I mean, it's really so, so exciting. We got to spend some time in Atlantic City during my year, and just to see the kind of history there, um, to be able to experience that is going to be tremendous this year. I will be going back, and I'm also glad because it's closer to where I am now in Virginia, so I get to drive. <laughs> Not too far to go, right, exactly. Exactly, but um, I think that that tradition is going to be wonderful to bring back. We've got the, the shoe parade on the boardwalk again, which is everybody's favorite. I think it's more popular than the pageant, actually. <laughs> And, I love uh, <laughs> exactly. And so I think that'll be really, really neat. Um, it's important, I think, for us to hold on to tradition because it is something that sets the Miss America organization apart where we have over a 90-year history. We're going to be nearing our 100th anniversary very soon, and I'm so excited for that. Um, and so being able to hold on to those things that make us unique, remember the legacy that we are creating, is, is really important to me. That is incredible. And I should ask you about your advice to all of the ladies who aspire to become Miss America someday. What would you tell them? Oh, goodness. Um, I guess something that I found that I kind of would have liked maybe somebody to tell me is that if you aren't Miss America today, right now, 
you're not going to be Miss America. And what I mean by that is I think so many times we really do feel like some event or some crown or some something is going to change who we are, how we act, how we speak, how we dress, everything that we do. And it doesn't. It really does not. And so if you, I mean, for, for silly little things like if you're the kind of person who wakes up in the morning and you're mean to everybody just because you didn't get enough sleep, and if you, you know, maybe um, don't really care about writing your sponsors thank you notes and doing things like this, it's not like all of a sudden you're going to win Miss America and then, oh, you're going to be the best person in the entire world, you're going to be sweet when you wake up in the morning, you're going to be wonderful <laughs> even when you have no sleep, you know, all those kinds of things. It doesn't turn out like that. And I think to some extent I, I used to think that, that I would think, well, if I was ever Miss America, I would feel so wonderful about myself. Of course I would never do this or that or the other thing. So, I mean, I don't care how young you are, all the way up to the state contestants that are now competing, all the way up to, goodness, even former Miss Americas who are now, you know, doing other things in their life. If you aren't acting like Miss America every single day of your life, then you're not Miss America. And I think that that's important for another reason, and that's because obviously only one of these contestants is going to win. The others are going to go back to their states and continue working as their state title holder. And in that position, they should be just as much Miss America as if they had the title. And so I think that's something that we should continue to realize and to work on because I would like nothing more than to see every year our state title holders represent the crown just as well, if not better, than the current face of the organization. I think that's something we kind of forget. We act like, oh, it's all Miss America's job to do that. It's her job to decide what people think of Miss America. No. Any female with a crown on her head is representing the organization. And I think that if we can embrace that role, it makes a big difference in, in how we act as title holders. That is great advice. And I think so many ladies forget that. And I, I do think they think, if only I win this crown, if I win this crown, it's going to change me. It's going to change my life. But we need to be acting, you know, like title holders, uh, role models now. And I, I love that. Love that advice. Now, you were Miss America at 17. Oh, you were Miss America. So <laughs> where do you possibly go from there? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, it was so funny because about halfway through my year, it kind of is uh, just an interesting switch. It works like a charm. The first six months, everybody's asking you, oh, how was it when you won? You know, what is it like? What did you think? And then the second six months, the last six months of your year, everybody right away switches to, so what are you going to do after this year? <laughs> and so <laughs> I started thinking, well, goodness, I hope my life doesn't end at 18 years old. You know, right. I expect to be going downhill. If everything's downhill from here, I'm not too right. happy about the future. Right. So, I, I mean, for myself, though, because I truly never had Miss America anywhere on my bucket list, my goal list, my dream list, anything like that, it was actually just kind of a little little side path, I guess. <laughs> and so you know, it's kind of back to the path I had originally planned, but with a lot of great resources because of that experience. So again, going to school now, hoping to go to law school, hoping to follow with, with politics, or, or going into criminal prosecution is what I would like to do, because obviously p politics is definitely a matter of time and place, and just kind of as things open up, or where I'm needed. If that doesn't happen, I would love to practice criminal prosecution back in Nebraska. Um, so that's one of my main goals right now. Um, but goodness, so many other things. I mean, my bucket list is about as long as the dictionary. My goals are all over the place. Uh, I mean, more immediate goals over the next six months. I'm working on my personal trainer certification. Over the next three months, I have my own physical goals for a competition that I'll be competing in soon. Um, I mean, just here in Virginia, there's so many different things that I'm working on and um, groups that I'm working with, things like that. So I think they, they come up all the time, and I think that's important because I have found many people will let one thing define them and then never move forward with in their life and whether that's in a good or a bad way like maybe they've regretted something their entire life or let it, they're letting their past haunt them or if it's in a good way where all you can do is live in the past and you say oh that was the best year of my life and that's all you can dwell on it's a problem because it totally stifles your growth. So I've always found it very important to always set your goals for the day, your goals for the week, your goals for the month, your goals for the year, and your lifetime goals. And so that's what I hope to continue to do moving forward. 
I, I just I love listening to you speak. I, I, I feel so uplifted and motivated <laughs> by you. I, I feel like I gotta get some new goals down. But oh my gosh, you you have such great advice. And and I know that you're also pageant coaching now too, which by the way, oh my gosh, you seem like you'd be so so motivational. Just just so uplifting to the people that you're coaching. But tell us about your coaching business and and do you specialize in any one particular area? Well, goodness, it's been it's been fun, and it's kind of something that I've just recently started doing because I realized that, of course, everybody asks Miss America for advice, right? As a pageant contestant, right? But I just kind of started realizing there's not too many title holders, especially national title holders, who do offer basically to have more extensive. Um, training with other contestants to offer advice, to help them out, things like that, um, to give experience. And so that's something that I've been wanting to do, and it's been it's been awesome. Um, I have a Facebook page, Gold Standard Pageant Coaching, that um, you know I try to help out contestants by doing something different every single day. So there's a verse of the week, there's a vocabulary word of the week, there's interview questions to practice with, um, things about physical fitness, all those kinds of things so that hopefully if contestants are paying attention, each week they're focusing on each of these areas of competition. So um, actually when it comes to coaching in general, I I kind of do want to focus on everything. Um, while interview we know is one of the most important in pretty much any pageant system, as well as on stage question, there's of course any other variety of your areas of competition which can be equally important because if you absolutely ruin any one, your chances aren't so great. Um, <laughs> with talent, I, I am an instrumentalist. I've played piano and guitar. I've sang and I've danced. Um, I danced for eight years and, and took many different forms of dance and did gymnastics through high school. So I, while I am not an expert on really any one area there, um, I do definitely always want to help with talent as much as possible because obviously that's extremely important, especially in the Miss America organization. Um, but just in general, I think there's a lot of things that people don't take into account when thinking about preparing for a pageant. And so in any system, sometimes we don't think about what message is our style communicating, such as our hair, our makeup, our clothing, our dresses. Instead, we just think about what do you like, what do you not like? rather than what are we communicating through our appearance. Um, also, obviously, mindset is huge, perspective, all of that. The, the psychological aspect of competing can oftentimes be more of an issue for most contestants than anything else. So you can have everything else down, and yet be wondering, what is going on? Why am I, you know, maybe not doing as well as I want, or this or that, or, or not having a good time with it? So much of that is just what's all in your head, and that is a huge, huge part of everything that we do, and so that's something that we want to focus on the most as well. Who better to coach with than Miss America? You've been at the top, you know. <laughs> How do you conduct your coaching? Is it by phone, by Skype? Well, goodness, I can do anything. I'm here in the Virginia area, which is nice because it's D.C., Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, New Jersey. All these states are pretty close together. Um, but Skype has made it much easier because you can do just about anything without being in person. So it's really nice, especially for interview and things like that. You can help so much um, through this face-to-face -face contact without even being in person. I mean, you can even do Skype makeup and hair lessons, just everything. So I, I definitely do a lot like that because usually location is an issue when you've got people all over the country. Um, and then, honestly, with, with phones and everything else, it's great to be in constant communication so that if someone is at a competition or if somebody is, you know, doing this or that, we can always stay connected, stay up to date. So whether it's sending emails or texts or just calls, um, all of those kinds of things can really help to just know that somebody's there to have someone to rely on. And, and when you do need motivation or encouragement, goodness knows how many times that happens along the way. Um, that you do have that as well. Isn't technology amazing? You can yes. keep, keep in touch all the time. It makes my life so much easier. I mean, I can't even imagine having done this prior to all of this technology. I mean, how do you stay in touch with everybody all over the country? It's It's been great. Oh my goodness, exactly. Well, now, if our viewers want to get in contact with you, if they're interested in coaching with you, what is the best way to reach you? Do you have a Facebook page that they should go to? Yes, 
Yes, I have my Facebook page, uh, both for coaching and my own personal Facebook page. Um, that's facebook.com forward slash Teresa M. Scanlon. Um, also, my email is info at TeresaScanlon.com. And just my website is just TeresaScanlon.com. Um, so any of those forms, of course, there's always so many different channels. <laughs> so any of those forms definitely works. Um, but I'm always interested in, in being able to talk to people and, and see where they're at, what their goals are, and helping them from there and seeing what we can do. Well, that sounds perfect. And before we wrap up for tonight, can you give us a peek of your Miss America crown? Oh, goodness. Absolutely. One second. Oh, I'm so excited to see it. <laughs> well, I hope you're enjoying the interview this evening with Teresa Scanlon, Miss America 2011, as she runs off to grab her beautiful and very sparkly Miss America crown to share with us. It's in the box that traveled with me for over 200,000 miles, so it's a, the box is definitely breaking, but the crown is still in pretty good shape. Oh, well, that's good, as long as the crown is still in good shape. <laughs> Here, let's see. Can oh. we see it there? There we go. <laughs> That is so gorgeous, so beautiful. I love that crown. That has to be one of the most beautiful crowns out there. I love it. Can you try it on for <laughs> Thank us? Thank you. <laughs> Will you put it on? Oh, goodness. Let's see. Can you see it? I can see there it. There you go. You can see oh, it. Oh, <laughs> perfect. You look so gorgeous. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, of course. So beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> Teresa, I have to say thank you so much for joining me. It, it's you. so easy to see why you were chosen as Miss America. You are phenomenal. You are beautiful, so well-spoken, intelligent, talented. And we are definitely looking forward to seeing all of the things that you accomplish in the future. Thank you thank so much. I really thank appreciate you for that. joining me. And thanks to everyone for tuning in tonight for this fabulous interview with the beautiful Teresa. And be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Thanks again, Teresa, and thank you, everyone. Thank bye -bye. you.